The shovel is a tool used by humanity for over 5,000 years, and for good reason. It's reliable, useful, and easily manufactured out of any hard material. Most people use shovels to dig holes, for example, digging graves to put people in. But what if the shovel was also used to make the dead bodies? From medieval to trench warfare, the shovel has been used as a weapon for as long as it's been used for digging. Luckily for all the gardening enthusiasts out there, Fallout 3's Point Lookout DLC adds the shovel as a usable melee implement. So today I'll be asking the question, can you beat Fallout 3 with only a shovel? The rules for this one are fairly basic, as you'd expect. Not much to say except that the only damage enemies using a shovel, I must play on very hard difficulty, and no companions can tag along. This one isn't a hard rule, more of a roleplay thing, but I'm also going to uphold a knightly code of honor. It'll make sense later, trust me. All that really means is no stealing or murder unless the person in question deserves it. Also, so things don't get too easy, I'm not allowing the unique fertilizer variant of the shovel for this playthrough. Now, with all that aside, let's get started. After the shoehorned racing minigame in my mother's womb, I name myself Shovel Knight and try to make someone who looks vaguely honorable. Unfortunately, my mother's heart crashes the desktop, and I intentionally waddle over to Liam Neeson as slowly as possible before he goes out for milk. I then try to break the laws of reality and jump over the gate using my ball, but the electric fence Dad puts up puts an end to that. Using a book to modify my genes, I go with 9 strength to whack people harder, 6 perception for spotting ne'er-do-wills, 6 endurance to take punishment like a good knight, 1 charisma and intelligence because digging in the dirt so long not only affected my smell, but gave me brain parasites, 8 agility to swing more in vats, and 9 luck for finding treasure and scoring more crits. For penning me in, I attempt to sick Mr. Teddy on him, and then assault his favorite religious passage with my rattle. When my attempts prove fruitless, I simply take my ball with me through the hyperbolic time chamber and arrive 10 years closer to my death. Because everyone else should be as miserable as me, I tempt them by placing all the objects on the room on their table before making them vanish before their eyes. Oh, and I get CQC training from a comic book. Being as honorable as I am, I give Butch my sweet roll, but then try to steal it back from him, only to see the bitch shoved it down his throat faster than a Chuck E. Cheese ticket muncher. For his transgressions, I try to stick a fork up his ass, and when that doesn't work, I try to do the same to everyone else in the room, finally succeeding with Liam Neeson. With my life dreams accomplished, I avoid Armstrong like the plague only to see her stalking me, do an MLG sniper compilation on the targets, stomp the roach, try to take a picture with his corpse, slap my dad on the ass, and help Amada with some bullies. Since I can't actually attack anything, I just block their punches until they get bored, healing my wounds with a nearby water fountain. I then select my tag skills, lockpick to find buried treasure, medicine to heal the joke that is my body, and melee weapons for more efficient hacking, whacking, smacking, etc. As for the escape, Butch has such dog shit aim that his mother almost gets chewed to death, but she disappoints us all by making it out alive. The rest involves a brief jog through some bullshit, lockpicking, hacking, and doping the fuck out of the vault before seeing the sun for the first time and leveling up, where I pull a marks and evenly distribute my skill points and use intense training to bump my endurance to 7. After a raider attack, I buy leather armor from Crow and sell him stuff I don't need. I'm so excited to meet Moira that I break my legs, and then slurp up some delicious bomb water to get extra crispy DNA, not before disarming the bomb for some street cred, of course. I get melee weapons to 50, sneak to 25, medicine to 36, and another point of endurance. On the way to my new house, I meet a man who looks suspiciously like a certain soda-obsessed stock- GAH! Uh, anyways, I check out my new house, meet a man I will definitely be killing later, and grab the strength bobblehead on my way out. A boring trek to minefield later, I harvest a few hot potatoes, get a few from Moira, and sell them right back to her. Since I'm still dirt, no pun intended, poor, I scavenge some things in Springvale and get some caps from Silver. I also deliver a letter to Arfu because I forgot you don't get paid right away. On the way, I discover Big Town, but that's about it. When I get there, I saw what happens if you approach Evan from the side. Hang on, you're not one of them. I nearly blasted you in two. And discover that the Wests have been killed. David's been super glued to the floor, but Matilda gets a cozy spot on the top bunk. I think I've spent enough time without a weapon, so off to Point Lookout we go. 
Nothing much happens on the way. I excavate the hollowed out rock, trade with a scavenger, some talons trick me into thinking they're my friend, I almost get turned into meat confetti, purchase an overpriced ticket to hillbilly land, and finally purchase the holy tool of my wrath, which I immediately put to use pummeling some stray dogs and raiding a recruitment station to recruit my losses. At the city of Rivets, I show my knightly honor by giving to a man in need, and then immediately take things from a woman in need. On the way to Germantown HQ, I warm up my shovel on some raiders, and when I get there, I show some mutants who is the superior species. Look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! When I get back, I use my fat body as a human shield to block the mutants while I give them a good whacking. I then use Mentats to stitch up Time Bomb and get the lucky 8 ball from him, maxing out my luck. On the path to Smith Casey's, I, for some reason, decide to clear out Vault 106. It isn't actually the worst of my ideas, as if that's a high bar, as it gets me Recon Armor, the Science Bobblehead, and some other goodies. Smith Casey's goes as it always does. Smack, 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 smack. Vault suit, broken radio, glass pitcher, garden gnome, glass pitcher, cinder block, garden gnome, soda bottle, level up, escape, loot. After discovering Tenpenny Tower for later, I act like any true knight should and pray at the church, even donating a few caps to absolve me of my sins. Meeting back up with Dad, I decide to take a trip back to Hillbillyville only to see the ship being attacked by crab people. Crab people, crab people, taste like crab, talk like people. After being pinched a few times, What ends up working is luring some talent company to distract and soften up the crabs while I huff a bunch of drugs and whittle them down with my shovel. While the swamp folk have 35 points of unblockable damage, disarming and circling them seems to be an effective strategy. My newfound confidence makes me try and take on a tracker. It does not go well. Dodging some pincers leads me to Plix Safari, where I get the Ghoul Ecology perk. It's supposed to give me a 5 plus damage bonus to ghouls, but due to a bug it applies to everything. I also pickpocket 800 caps from the man himself, and since he watches people get ripped to shreds for his amusement, I'd say he deserves it. Looting the hotel, I try to do the Velvet Curtain quest, but because life hates me, the quest becomes bugged and doesn't update. Oh well, on to bigger and better things, namely buying more shovels, meeting another person of the faith, and actually getting to use the shovel as it's intended, finding some less than stellar loot in the process. And then I fart around the island looking for graves to dig up, some highlights being ransacking an old man's house without him giving a single shit, getting a mini nuke from the shack I got my hat in in the last Fallout 3 video, using a stealth boy to escape, trading with Haley, talking to a lady scraping battery acid into her moonshine, getting blown up, and heading back to DC only to see that all the minor lurks have respawned. Luckily, with my newfound proficiency at using a shovel, cracking them wide open isn't a problem. Speaking of cracking things wide open, a bunch of super mutant schools get that same treatment. After the standard mindless busy work, the Enclave crashed the party, and I wanted to see what would happen if I got rid of Colonel Autumn's weapon before he shoots Janice. The result is this. Colonel, I assure you that this facility will not function. We have never been able to successfully replicate test results. I suggest you comply immediately, sir in order to prevent any more incidents. I was laughing my ass off for about five minutes after this, I kid you not. Unfortunately, different weapons like a Fat Man, Mesmatron, and Frag Grenades don't work. I then clip through the glass and take the Colonel's snazzy coat for myself. After putting some zombies six feet under where they belong, I fight my way past some raiders to cleanse this land of the greatest evil of all, Grandma Sparkle. Little does the Wasteleia know, she's a foul witch practicing dark magic, so it's my nightly duty to put a stop to her. I almost managed to take her out, but she uses a healing spell and then tries to make an aquatic retreat. Unfortunately for Sparks, one more solid swing in vats is all it takes to vanquish her for good. 
Want proof that she's evil? This kid literally calls her a monster. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. Don't worry, kid. You're safe now. Completing this quest levels me up, where I increase medicine, repair, and melee weapons to get the bloody mess perk. After getting power armor training, I learn where to go for the gek. Well, training is useless unless I actually get a set for myself, and while I don't like killing my own kind, I whack my way past a bunch of genetic failures until I reach the outcast base. Yeah, I actually got the outcast base and the Washington Monument mixed up. Whoops. I guess this Enclave stuff will have to do for now. Laying the smack down on some more raiders, I head into the trenches of the Washington Monument and grab a suit of power armor. However, I have to use so many stim packs to get in and out that I decide it isn't worth it and reload a save. I then take a little trip to Dave's Republic for the Perception Bobblehead, getting harassed by some of Burke's hitmen on the way. Don't worry, I won't forget this. Speaking of bobbleheads, I also stop by the Deathclaw Sanctuary for some nice stuff to sell and an extra point of endurance. I do have to use a Stealth Boy to sneak out, however. Tenpenny Tower is my next stop for both stim packs and to start the quest, The Manhandled Manservant, since I don't want this playthrough to be too short. After hearing a Chinese man yelling about bison, 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 I head into Rockopolis and find the manservant in question, along with the unarmed bobblehead, which is worthless for this playthrough. Remember when I said, Me and a man I will definitely be killing later. This suit tailored! Giving the bad news to Herbert gives me access to the contents of his safe, which I immediately pawn off for more stim packs. Stim packs I'm gonna need since I don't have the charm to get into Little Lamplight the easy way. Channeling my inner Abe Lincoln levels me up, where I use here and now to max out melee weapons and get the finesse perk. While waiting for Nick Knack's store to open, I'm approached by the worst NPC in the game and refuse to babysit him since I'm on an important mission. Cleansing all the mutant filth in Vault 87. Except Fox, he's a bro. With the MacGuffin in my possession, I get night napped by the Colonel and fuck with him again using the console. I give him the correct code, which normally causes him to shoot me, but since I took away his pistol, he runs like a little bitch. The Enclave are the same pushovers as ever, and I can even use Adderall to low tier god President Eden into committing Alt F4. Before I finish the game, I think I should go back to my roots, pun not intended, and help the hippies of Oasis, as I am using a shovel after all, and where better to take a shovel than a place surrounded by plants. Before that, I get gifted a steak, cure my drug habits, and give some Mr. Handy excretions to a beggar. Speaking of drug habits, I have to drink from a bowl of what I can only assume is NyQuil laced with LSD and talk to the Giving Tree, who wants me to end his life. Apparently, being too talkative has its downsides, as it gives me full body paralysis and forces me to reload an earlier save. The mire lurks in the cave are where my build starts to fall off. I have a miserable time taking them out, simply because I do very little damage and take a lot of damage, forcing me to spam chems and stim packs. Doesn't help that the aquatic nature of Myrlers can glitch out vats and make them a pain in the ass to hit. Regardless, I eventually manage to slog through it until I can destroy Harold's heart and get the bark skin perk for some extra damage resistance. Makes me wonder if Bob's brother is gonna grow around the Lone Wanderer in the future. Anyways, I level up, upping medicine and getting the Jesus perk. The hippies are surprisingly okay with me killing their god, and with that, it's mission complete. Well, since I'm a glutton for EXP, I stroll over to Andale and expose their nasty habits. They're eating her! And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! As a knight, it's my sworn duty to eliminate scum like this from the face of the planet, especially when they try to pervert the good book. Judge not, lest ye be judged, as the good book says, honestly, how many people have you killed? Can't stay the sight of your own blood? I'm hit! Oh. I'm hit! Oh. I'm hit! I'm hit! 
it! Damn! What's the matter, huh? Can't stand the sight of your own blood? A bit of orphan making later, I try to finish off the playthrough with this searching for Cheryl quest as it involves digging up a grave. That did not go well. First of all, I get lost in the Ghoul Metro for longer than I'd like to admit. Second, after digging up the grave, it points me to a terminal at the Riley Rangers HQ, which is locked behind very hard security, and I didn't feel like doing the entire Riley's Rangers quest just for this, so I sort of just gave up. Besides, I have more pressing matters to attend to. Namely, escorting budget Optimus Prime to the purifier in a suit of armor fit for a knight. In the middle of an active war zone, Watts decides to berate me about a quest I barely had any involvement in. Luckily, Lyons is always there to protect me. I actually managed to get some good hits on the Enclave before Prime can vaporize them, but then, in a moment I can't explain, Sarah Lyons blocks Fox on a walkway, and then Liberty Prime turns him into a fine pulp. I admit, I was traumatized by this fictional character's death more than any grown person should be. In a fit of blind revenge, I bonk the horny out of some more clave and turn Colonel Autumn into Colonel Fall- Oh wait, I already made that joke. In a moment that's probably infinitely less profound than I thought it would be, I lay down Fox's personal super sledge on Colonel Autumn's corpse before inputting the code, sacrificing myself for the good of mankind, and beating Fallout 3 with only a shovel. In conclusion, well, what is there to say? The shovel is actually a decent melee weapon despite being a piece of farming equipment, so this run wasn't that hard. Upholding a knightly code of honor was also nothing new since I beat the game without breaking the law. And being a knight, having access to power armor was just a cherry on top of the cake. In fact, getting the shovel in the first place was probably the hardest part. In hindsight, I probably should have done the whole Port Lookout DLC if I wanted a real challenge, but oh well. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, write a comment, or become a patron. If you didn't enjoy the video, leave a dislike and offer constructive criticism so I can improve. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, have their names at the end of each video and in the description, and any suggestions left by patrons are guaranteed to become official videos. Also, make sure to check me out on Twitter, Discord, and Reddit. This is Causal Loop signing off. Peace. Watch for rats, exploding rats, helicopters! And wind up rats, there's lots of rats. Mm -hmm.